In the previous lesson, we began developing our first web application using Ruby on Rails under our new Linux desktop. As you can see, I've made a few tweaks to our list of products. We have the title of the product, the category, the description, and then the links to edit and destroy each and every product. I'm going to create one more so you can see the changes to the product form. I'm going to create one new product called Broom. The description should be something like to clean your house better. And the category is going to be utility. I'm going to create this product. And there you go. The product was successfully created. If we go again to the home page, clicking on store, you can see the new product being added. We're going to add in an option that allows the user to fill in a quantity for each different product. At the very bottom, we're going to see a button to place a new order. And finally, we're going to have a link to list all of our orders, when they were created, and what items with what quantities the user chose. Let's open our text editor and begin our work. We have lots of different things to do in order to fulfill this feature. The first thing we should do is we should add in a form to the products page in order to allow ourselves to indicate how many items of that product we want to order. So add form to products page. This should be good. The next thing is we should create several different models for order and order item. So let's just type in handle models. Then the next thing is we should create the controller. So I'll just type in create controller. Finally, we're going to have to list all of those orders. So I'll type in list orders. Okay, this is our to do list. I'm going to type in to do so you can see to do on top of this new file. I'm just going to keep it like that as a buffer. Let's move on to what we actually need to do. The first thing is adding a form to the products page. So I'm going to app views products and then index.html.erb. We have our list of products with all of this markup. What I'm going to do is right below the list of different buttons, I'm going to add in a horizontal rule. So let me just type in this. And from here on, I should have a label and then a text field. So I'll do that. First of all, that label, I'm going to type in how many and close it. And then I should add in an input of type text. This is not going to be the final result. This is just to type in a placeholder for whatever it is we're going to implement in Rails. The default will be zero. So let's just keep it like that. Let's see the final result. And there you go. We have how many and then a box with the default value of zero. So let's go back to our text editor. In this case, I'm just going to skip this step for a while so that we can handle the models and the controller next. And only after that, I'm going to complement the form tag to be included in the index template. So the next thing we should be focusing on is on creating the models. And for that, I'm going to open the terminal. This is the server running. So I'm just going to open a new tab, click on file and then open tab or type in control shift T and you should be getting a new tab. Okay. I'm going to use the terminal to invoke the rails command and then G for generate. And I'm going to create a new model called order. The order is actually not going to take any specific attribute. We only need an ID and the default timestamps. So I'm just going to press enter and the new model will be created. A series of different files are created, including the migration file, the order model, and then the tests. We're not going to focus on tests in this course. That's just not our main concern at the moment. We're also going to create another model called order item. This order item class will have a quantity, which is the exact value that's going to be inside the text box we just inserted. So it's going to be an integer. Then it's going to have a reference to product. So you type in product colon references. Then you're going to have an order, which is also a reference to another table. So you type it in like that. Press enter and the order item model will also be created along with a migration file. Let's type in 
RakeDB migrate so that we create the tables in the database automatically. I'll press enter and there you go. I already had the orders table as well as the order items table. Okay, so now that we have the models organized and ready to be used, it's time we generate the controller to interact with those models and also the view. Typing in Rails G and then controller will allow us to create one controller. I'll call it orders so we get an orders controller and the list of actions that I want are simply index and create. Pressing enter we will generate that controller and the respective routes but notice these routes are not exactly what I want. Instead I'm going to the text editor and click on let's see down here config routes. You can see that we have a products resource I'm going to do the very same with orders. After all, an order is a resource, so I'll do exactly like this. Let's see, resources and then orders. This time I'll pass an only option because I just want index and create. These are the actions. We don't want anything else. So if we type in, for example, slash orders slash new, that route won't exist. Okay. This is also taken care of. Let's go to the controllers and select the orders controller. We'll take a look at this later on. So I'm just going to pass in a comment saying that we want to retrieve all orders and we want to include information on order items and products. We should just remind ourselves of that. For the create action, this is going to be a little harder. I'm going to create a new order object, which is going to be order.new and pass in some params. Rails 4 includes the strong parameters gem, so I'm going to pass in an order params message, which is going to be declared as a private method right down below. Now the order params method is going to interact with the strong parameters gem, so what I want to type in here is params.require and then order, and we want to permit every single item in the order params hash. To explain you a little better, the params variable is a hash, but since we are including the strong parameters gem, we want to make sure that we need the order parameter, which is going to be a hash of different data, and then we are going to allow every single attribute inside that hash. For now, we don't have anything that is going to be harmful to our system, so I'm just going to allow everything. Then I'm going to type in if order.save, then we're going to redirect to orders, or rather orders path. Let's see if I can type correctly. And we want to pass in a message. So I'm just going to pass a notice option saying that the product was successfully created, or rather the order. So let me just fix that to order was successfully created, or placed rather. Otherwise, I'm going to pass in a different option. So if it doesn't save, I'm going to redirect to the home path. So redirect to home path, and I'm going to pass in an alert message. So alert, something went wrong when placing the order. That sounds just about right for me. The next step should be to integrate the view with the products controller. After all, when we are listing all of the products, we're going to have to have an order object that contains a pre-populated list of our order items. I'm going to explain you why. But first let's just go ahead and create the order object which will be order.new. As I've mentioned we're going to need to create order items based off each product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to each of the products and type in the each method and for each product I'm going to the order object access the order items variable and call in the build method. What I'm going to do is pass in product equals product. This way I'm going to make sure that these order items are associated to the order and to the respective product. The only thing left to do is specify the quantity. Okay, the controller is set already. So the final step, let's see the to-do list after, of course, listing all of the orders. 
So we already handled the models and database. We created the controller with the respective action. And we are going now to add in the form to the products page. Let's go there. And instead of using a loop through each of the products, I'm going to create a new form for method. So let me just type it in form for and we're going to pass in the order object that's created in the controller. So let's do that now. I'm just going to go to the very end and close the form method. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now I'm going to pass in the form builder as an argument to the block. And instead of looping through each of the products, I'm going to F and type in fields for fields for is a method available in the rails API that allows me to cycle through each association. Let me explain. I'm going to use F dot fields for and pass in order items. And I'm going to pass in an argument to the block, which is going to be the order items builder. Similar to the first one, this is affected to the order scope. In line four, we're going to reduce the scope to each different order item. I'll pass in, for example, order item form, so OIF, and then I'm going to instantiate a new product variable for each one of them. Product equals OIF.object.product. What does this mean exactly? Well, let's review this just one more time. We are accessing the order instance variable, which is an order object. The order object contains order items. And to loop through each one of them and create form fields for each one of those items, we use the fields for method and pass in the respective builder. This builder contains the associated object, which is each different order item. And each item contains its own product because we're associating it right here. Let's see the products controller. When creating a new order item, we are associating the respective product. So this works. We are accessing the product and instantiating it to product. This way we don't have to update each and every single reference to product. What we need to do is to change this input text field and make it so it is a new Rails helper. I'm going to pass in oif.text field and pass in quantity. This way we're going to affect the respective order item. We already have the order item as you see here, so this is good to go. We're almost there. Let me just go ahead to the browser and reload this page. Let's see what we still need to do. We need to run the migration once again. So let's go to the terminal and call in rake db migrate. Okay, now that's set up. Let's go ahead to the browser once again and reload. You can see that we don't have the order items method. This is because we need to go to our editor and complement the information on the model. So let's go to models and then order. The order class doesn't have the relationship specified. So let's go to class order and tell that it has many order items. And now we get a nil reference for product. Product is being accessed to the nil object. This means that something is missing. Let's go to the text editor and see what we need to fix. There's actually one thing. We need to go to the order model and complement this with an accepts nested attributes for and pass in order items. This means that the order model will accept nested attributes for the remaining nested objects. Order items will be available in the form, and that's why it was throwing nil in the first place. To use the fields for method in the form builder, you'll need to have this instruction in the model. Refreshing this, all of our products are inside. We can add in the information on the quantity for each different product. Let me just right click on this and click on inspect element. And I just want to make sure that the names for each different input fields are there and correct. We want to pass in the attributes for the order items. This is the first one and it's all about the quantity. There's just one thing that we need to fix and that is to add in the product reference for each of the order items. Let's go here really quick and I'm going to copy this 
chunk of code and pass in OIF dot hidden field. We want to pass in product ID, so product ID, and it should be OIF or rather product dot ID since we already have the reference for the product. Let me just reinvent this really quick. Go to the browser and reload. And let's see what we have here now. Oh, this is my mistake. This is not the way it's done. Rather, it is called product ID, the key, and then we need to pass in a comma and pass in value equals product.id, value colon product.id. Let's save and reload. And there you go. Now we have both attributes. Notice how the value is one for the first product. And if I go here to the broom item, I'm going to inspect it and the value is four. So everything is working as we were expecting. Now is the time of truth. I'm going to the top and I'm going to specify one tomato, two apples, three items of veal and four brooms. Oh, there's no button here down below. Let's do that really quick. I'm going to the editor and add in a new paragraph. And I'm simply going to add in a new button by using the Rails helper F dot button and call it place new order. Close the tag and this should be good. Go into the browser and reload. There you go. There's our new button. I'm going to click it. Okay, it is working. Notice how we are redirected to the orders page. Now we need to complement the information on listing orders. I'm going to go to the editor and open views orders index. And I'm going to complement this file with a snippet of code. We have our order list with each of the orders being printed out to the screen. We have the ID of the order and the time it was created. We're just going to loop through each of the order items and specify the quantity of the respective product. There's a link to it in case you want to go to details of the product. So we can save and go to the browser and reload. Oh, let's see. The orders variable is nil. So let's go to the text editor, go to the orders controller. Oh, there you go. There's our note. I'm just going to replace it with orders equals order dot all. To be efficient, I'm going to pass in includes then order items and also include information on the respective product and then type dot all. This way, everything will be loaded preemptively, increasing efficiency on fetching records from the database. Let's go to the browser again, reload, and there you go, there's our order. It was created five minutes ago, and you can see that we ordered one of tomato, two apples, three sticks of veal, and four brooms. That's great. All we need to do to finish this up is to add in the link to the layout in order to view all of our orders. Let's do that really quick. Let's go to views, layouts, application, HTML, ERB, and go right where it says new product and add a new link. So I'm going to copy it and replace this with orders. And the link should be something like orders path. Save and reload. And there you go. There's our link right there. We can go to the general list of products, create a new product, or list all of our orders. Congratulations on building one successful product using Ruby under Linux. In the next lesson, I'm going to teach you how to configure a new database to use, specifically Postgres. Postgres is really common in production environments, so I'm going to teach you how to use it in development as well. See you soon.